You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday the 3rd of April and I'm Nick from Milford. Looking at the key economic news from last week. Starting in the US, the core PCE index was released for the month of February, slowing more than expected to 0.3% month-on-month compared to expectations of 0.4% and down from 0.5% in January. Remember, the PCE index is the Fed's preferred measure of inflation. We also had the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Survey final print for March. This was revised down to 62 compared to expectations of 63.3 and from a preliminary reading of 67. This was the first decline in sentiment in four months and was led by a weakening in one-year business conditions as consumers are becoming increasingly concerned of a recession. One-year inflation expectations were revised lower to 3.6% from 3.8% in the preliminary, and the five-year outlook was revised up to 2.9% from 2.8%. Finally, in the US, we had the personal spending and income numbers out for February. Spending was up 0.2% month-on-month, slightly below market expectations of 0.3%, and income rose 0.3% month-on-month, slightly ahead of expectations of 0.2%. We had Eurozone CPI out on Friday with year-on-year inflation easing to 6.9%, slightly below consensus of 7.1%. However, the key focus will be on the core reading that continued to increase month-on-month to 5.7%, in line with consensus and up from 5.6% last month. With core inflation still rising, policymakers in the EU will have pressure to continue hiking rates. Moving to New Zealand, the ANZ Consumer Confidence Index fell to 77.7 in March, down from 79.8 last month. The number of people who believe it's a good time to buy a major household item increased slightly but remain at very low levels, and inflation expectations increased to 5.4% from 5.3% previously, the highest read in 9 months. This will continue to put pressure on the RBNZ to raise rates also. Finally in Australia, we had the preliminary retail sales numbers out for February rising 0.2% month-on-month ahead of expectations of 0.1%, but still down from last month's 1.8%, showing a levelling of retail spending. We also had the monthly CPI indicator come in at 6.8% for February, easing from 7.4% last month and below consensus of 7.1%. Turning to equity news, early in the week, First Citizen Bank agreed to buy $72 billion of Silicon Valley Bank's assets at a discount of $16.5 billion leaving approximately $90 billion worth of assets in receivership for disposition by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. Last week, we also had Albemarle submit a non-binding proposal to acquire 100% of Lion Town Resources, a pre-production lithium company with a large spodumene deposit in Western Australia. The $2.50 bid was rejected by the board as they believe it substantially undervalued the company. We also had United Malt Group receive a non-binding proposal from French company Malterie Soufflé to acquire all outstanding shares at $5 per share. United Malt Group has granted a period of exclusive due diligence, and if the French group provides a binding proposal for no less than the initial $5 per share bid, United Malt Group's board intends to unanimously recommend shareholders vote in favour. Infratil held their annual Investor Day on Tuesday with no large surprises. They did talk to the renewable energy pipeline being a key driver of optionality in the portfolio, and that the US Inflation Reduction Act provides additional tailwinds in the space. Looking at the week ahead, in the US we have the ISM manufacturing print out on Tuesday and the non-manufacturing print on Thursday. We have US non-farm payrolls and employment data out on Saturday, both key data points that the Fed will be watching closely. Expectations are for non-farm payrolls to drop to 238,000 for March, down from 311,000 in February. In Australia we have the RBA interest rate decision on Tuesday with expectations for a 25 basis point hike, followed by Governor Lowe speaking on Wednesday. Finally, we have the interest rate decision for New Zealand on Wednesday, with the market pricing in 25 basis points bringing the OCR to 5%. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.